Hello and welcome to this video edition of Technomicon Media. This is Matthew and this week's product review on Technomicon.com features GarageBand for the iPad. Uh, I'm starting off showing you a varying array of instruments that you can select from to uh, create music in the iPad uh, ranging from samplers to audio inputs to uh, guitars, keyboards, and of course drum machines uh, shown here. Uh, the interesting thing I'll point out, you can see the little uh, loading wheel this is actually what I found is a byproduct of having a, a fully completed song, so to say. So things take a lot longer to load once you have all your tracks recorded in. Uh, here you can see me playing around with the drum kit and um, works pretty well. And there's uh, six different drum kits to choose from. And right here is a synthetic drum machine modeled heavily after uh, Roland TR-808 and uh, has very 808 sounding uh, components to it, which are all pretty much uh, modeled uh, in real time uh, with some uh, high pass, low pass filters, as well as uh, changing the resonance frequency. The main downside to editing uh, drum sounds with a uh, garage band is that all of the effects seem to be global so that means that if you want to affect say the snappiness of a snare that's also going to affect all the other instruments in the kit or in the track and um, the only way to adjust different parts of a drum kit is to split them into multiple tracks and, and therein lies the other real limitation with GarageBand. One of the very few is the fact that GarageBand works in an 8-track sequencer mode, so that means you can have 8 different tracks. So dedicating multiple tracks in order to uh, split up the sounds in your drum kit is just going to mean you're going to have less tracks dedicated to other instruments like your guitars and your samples and your keyboards and whatnot. And here we have the uh, sequencer view mode, which uh, allows you to, to view all of your tracks in this sort of no, uh, pseudo notation mode where you can see where notes are falling. And it and has a pretty cool little drag to the side view for uh, instrument volume control and, and master effects. And what I'm showing here is how you can actually edit in the uh, sequencer notation mode. Unfortunately, sequencer notation and, and the sequencer in general is, is, is limited to purely real-time recording. There's no sort of step recording within GarageBand and there's no step editing either. So that that is, is pretty limiting compared to what a lot of people would be used to in terms of a full fully functional sequencer. But what I'm demonstrating here is, is some of the functionality that that the sequencer does have and that what I'm showing here is is deleting out components of notation, you know, moving it around in the track, copying it, and then pasting it and duplicating, say, you know, a drum part that that you really like and you want that to to carry through to the through the entire track, or in, in this case, a, a piano melody. So, in addition to um, copy and pasting uh, within a specific track, you can also copy and paste notation from one track to another. So, if you wanted to say beef up the sound of your melody by having multiple instruments play the same sound, you can do that as well. And as you can see, I just duplicated and, and copied uh, uh, a series of notes uh, multiple times over. Being a fan of synthesizers, I found that GarageBand had a, a, a huge array of sounds to choose from, and, and they were quite fun to play with. And the, um, the real-time modeling is, is pretty good. Um, here I'm playing with uh, one of the many, you know, types of synthesizers available and, and playing around with the arpeggiator. The arpeggiator is, is pretty awesome. Um, it has a lot of good quick functionality. You can, you can set things up really quickly uh, without a lot of stress. And, and the real-time elements of the, the knob tweaking and the modulation and, and velocity control is all there. Another great addition to GarageBand for the iPad is the addition of a sampler. Uh, I just want to touch on a few of the limitations first before I talk about some of its highlights. Uh, the main limitation is, of course, that you can only have one sound on the instrument kit at any given time, meaning that 
um, as opposed to you know studio samplers that may be able to hold a variety of different samples and an actual in addition to that multiple pitches this allows you to play one sample however which way you want to edit it in multiple pitches but it's still limited to one sample okay so that being said um, the sampler does have some cool features it has uh, looping uh, you can reverse the sample and you can affect its waveform uh, from a volume control standpoint or you know for those familiar with it it's an attack sustain delay and release waveform and just playing around with some of the presets that come with it and uh, looping those around and uh, giving you guys an idea of the quality and uh, just to point out that the sampler has a built-in input microphone so you can record on the fly you know your voice or talking or something on TV or if you want to do it that way as well as using the input here you can see the waveform manipulation which is pretty cool looking and it works really well you just move your finger around and it changes the waveform for you last but not least for things I wanted to cover about GarageBand for the iPad is the guitar UI which which is also the same for the bass UI um, basically the string UI I'll call it and I just think it's brilliant the way they coupled the intuitiveness of, of a real fretboard and, and the chords and melodies that you would play. And what I'm showing here is what's called autoplay for people that may not have much experience or any experience playing with guitars and, and wanting to, to strum some melodies. What autoplay does is it, it has a, a bank of four sort of preset strumming arrangements and you can select, select around and... Uh, play different chords and whatnot. And you can actually switch between you know chord and, and notation mode and the chord mode is for playing the autoplay and then notation mode is for strumming it like a real guitar and it more or less handles like a real guitar and and as pointed out by others that I know it's it's actually better in a sense than playing with a with a traditional keyboard and, and using a, a guitar based you know synthesizer bank in, in a program gives a much more realistic feel from what I heard. And once again, this is Matthew for Technomicon Media saying thank you for watching. And for the full article on GarageBand for the iPad, visit us at www.technomicon.com.